Hello again there everybody, this is going to be Jun League number 92. Uh, we just got some really, really exciting Modern Horizons 2 spoilers, which I'll probably be talking about throughout this video. So, uh, that'll be fun. But in, uh, while, while all this happens, going to just do another Jun League as we tend to do here. And very similar list to what I've been playing in the recent past. I've just really liked the list. Uh, it features Bone Crusher Giant, and it features lots of one mana interaction leaning off of the one mana discard and this is i think a uh, a good a good thing to be doing in a format filled with uh lots of lots of uh aggro -y decks when when we're not really expecting to see many of the control and combo decks because the, the discard is really great versus control and combo but versus versus the aggro and mid-range decks the uh the retroactive answers i think are much better than the proactive answers because uh if there are things on the field already thought he's ain't going to do anything about it um, the threat package is still two Bob, four Tarmogoyf, two Kroxa, again the three Bone Crushers and the three Bloodbraid Elves. I would love to be playing another Bloodbraid Elf, but for curve considerations, playing three Bone Crusher, I think dumbing it down at the top is probably fine. And then for for more card advantage e re, uh, resources on top of the two Dark Confidants and two Kroxas, we've got three copies of Ren and Six, one of the more powerful Planeswalkers printed in recent times, but maybe that new uh, three mana walker, the black green thing, uh, maybe that card's also very good. So I mean, I'm definitely gonna be trying out that black green walker as I think it may be busted, but we'll see. Uh, so let's jump into the league. Actually, I guess before that, I usually like to do the metagame breakdown. So here's that. Uh, Blitz in at number one. This deck's been absolutely crushing it in, in the various challenges and also um, the higher up events on Magic Online. So something to look out for that. Um, through the breach also being very good. I think number one and two, the, these two slots. I think they owe a lot of their a lot of their recent success to the uh, the new two mana sorcery that costs a blue and a red that I can't remember the name of at the moment. Expressive iteration. So the uh, that's the uh, look at the top three: one to hand, one into exile. You can cast under turn, one on the bottom. So it's effectively two mana draw two with some upside. So that card's very strong, and I think these two decks owe a lot of their success to that. Um, Heliod following. Falling a few pegs even lower, getting moved down by uh, Amulet Titan. We saw Eldrazi Tron had pushed it down to fourth prior, but Amulet Titan pushing it down even another peg. And then down in the remaining of the top 15, um, five, five color escape shift, still very powerful. Esper Control becoming ever more popular. Burn recently, recently back up to the top 15. We haven't seen that in a, in a hot minute or two. And then Dredge, we would like to avoid seeing. Tron, we would like to avoid seeing. Niv, we would like to avoid. And Gruul, we would like to avoid. But just about everything else, I expect to have a fairly okay game against. Uh, maybe more shaky against the likes of Amulet and Eldrazi Tron. But I expect to have okay games, games 2 and 3. So the, the format, at least as far as the top 15 is concerned, not looking super hospitable to Jun. But we're going to jam it anyway because this is the Jundra Dome. All right, let's get into match number one. Spunky says you uh, started building Shadow as your second deck. Yeah, that deck's sweet. It's really fun. Are you, are you talking about that that red card chaos? The uh, it's kind of like a Delver, but only if you have uh, Delirium. That card seems cool, but I mean, it might you might need some work for it to be good. But you need work for Delver to be good too. So who knows? Yep, this hand is acceptable. We're missing green mana, but we also don't really have anything where green is super required. And we're immediately playing against Is It Prowess, probably the best deck in the format. So I think it's pretty important to be able to kill all of the opponent's threats. That said, uh, Inquisition will do its best. In, its best. Uh, a, uh, it'll do its best impression of a removal spell if I cast it early and try to take a creature. I'm not super worried about taking a big hit early as long as I could stymie my opponent's quick, my my, my opponent's quick threats. So they do have Storming Entity. We could intend on saving the Lightning Bolt for that. Or I could just take the Mana Morphos um, to disable it. But if I take the Mana Morphos, they still get to use their turn committing a Sprite Dragon. So what I think I'm going to do is actually just take the Sprite Dragon. 
because then on the next turn, uh, I'm, I'm going to cross my fingers the opponent doesn't draw mutagenic growth, and if they don't, I can both push and bolt, and I feel very ahead. Whereas if I take if I take the Metamorphose now, I'm leaving my opponent with two threats, and I don't have enough removal to deal with them all. So yeah, I, I do think I'm taking the Sprite Dragon, and then um, hoping they don't draw exactly mutagenic growth. I guess they have two looks at it since Morphos draws a card, right? Yeah, I think it's also better to take the Sprite Dragon because this thing is going to stick by turn three anyway, right? Alright, and we, we found the green source, so I guess I'm playing that. I guess I could lead on Fatal Push. See if they've got any stops set. Not that it would change any decisions. They just don't have stop set. I think I would still have to bolt now. But uh, a little extra info when I can get it is nice. So now we've dealt with all three threats as opposed to still facing down a sprite dragon. And, like I could have killed it with Kologon's command. But like now I've got Kologon's command for a future issue. I got another one. That's bad for us. Their last card's Wild Slash. I guess we can make them discard it. They top top, which is scary. So Black Leaf Cliffs is the play almost for sure. Um, and I guess I'm in a Kologon's Command. I mean, Kologon's Command may be better used to buy back a Blood Braid though. So maybe it is actually true that I should just cast the Crooks in out. It deals with the Wild Slash all the same. But the opponent kept cards on top, so maybe maybe they're putting more threats on top. But if they've got another threat, they can protect it with Wild Slash anyway. So I guess I'm just going to be casting Kroxa here, saving the Kologon's command for maybe later. But yeah, second Stormwing is definitely going to be problematic. And it would have been even more problematic had we not taken the, taken the line that we had before. So feeling good about my decisions so far, but second Stormwing is a problem. Hi, Mom. Yeah, yeah, the, the threat density of Blue Red Prowess is, I think, what makes it so good. Alright, so these were the cards that they knew were on top. So the next card they find is random. And they found the Soul Scar. Alright, that's a problem. We can't even Kologon's Command it because the opponent's got a Lava Dart. So, options here. I could just cast Blood Braid now, and I think that's the strongest option that I've got access to. I, I can hope that this just hits a removal spell, which I think is my best case. If it doesn't, I may just block. Also, this play means that if I draw an untapped land next turn, I could maybe combine Stomp and Kolgon's Command to kill this. So I think I think the play is just Shock now as opposed to Kolgon's Commanding for nothing. Because again, they'll just Lava Dart me. So uh, let's go to 8, and then hope this hits some way to interact with the board. Even a way to block would be good. I just really don't want to hit a discard spell. Stomp, okay. So this will at least make them do the thing now. And then we'll still have we'll still have the uh the blood braid to block. I could have just played it as a 4-3, but I, I like getting the lava dart out of the way as well. Yeah, BBE into the terminate would have been best case. Alright, gotta take the hit obviously for four. That ain't gonna do it. So we're not just dead, right? I can Kologon's Command kill a thing. And I guess... I, I could draw step in in case the opponent finds another threat. They could find another spell, but I'm not beating a spell anyway. So I think if I am going to cast this, draw step is probably the best time. Because again, I'm, I'm not beating a spell anyway. So I can kill a thing, block a thing, take three again, then I'm drawing to a way to kill the Stormwing. So, oop, I didn't set the stop. Oop. All right, well, I guess I'll do it now. 
So, uh, the old discard shock a soul scar. It's okay. I, I have talked about Ignoble a little bit, but I'm sure I'll, it'll be a hot point in this video. I, I think Ignoble will be good, but I don't think it will be good as Jund currently exists. I think other things will have to change in order to inter, in order to really get the power level of it to be higher. All right, so we need to we need to find a Bolt or a Terminate right now. Not exactly. I guess another another way to damage something would have worked, but. We are not beating second copy of Stormwing, unfortunately. This was like the one threat we couldn't deal with. Second one was pretty was pretty unfortunate. All right, for sure bringing in Brutality. For sure bringing in Fatal Push. I like the Kalidus, and I think I'm liking Spell Bombs, at least two of it. Spell, spell Bombs going to be good, I think, versus uh, the various Lava Dart plans. Like, they, we, can, we can make them use the Lava Darts when they don't want to. And if they're playing Bedlam Reveler, this is a way to stymie that. Alright, and Run and Six doesn't really kill anything. Uh, I want to take out the Thought Seizes for sure, and the Bobs for sure. I'm going to put two Run and Sixes back in, because I think the Run and Sixes are probably just better than this stuff. I could bring in another Spell Bomb. I could I could maybe consider Engineer, but I don't like the Engineers. It, it, it's it's like we're, we're spending three mana to maybe kill something, and it's pretty tempo negative when we play a three mana removal spell, and they answer it with a one mana removal spell, and then just attack us for a crap ton anyway. Like, it, it'll trade with anything, assuming it actually gets to trade. But I, I don't think that's going to be good enough on average. Yes, I would love to go first. Thank you. Yep, this the sand seems good. We will need to find another black source to to get this Liliana. And this is looking like we're getting probably Blood Crypt, but I'm I'm bolting the first thing anyway, right? So like the issue here is I have to I have to get a green source into play next turn anyway, which means I'm probably playing forest. So I can't play Mountain here because then I have to get Overgrown Tomb with this to play the Goyf, and I don't want to get Overgrown Tomb. I don't want more green, I want more red. So I think I'm just going to play the Mire now, and then if I have to fetch Shock to Bolt, I'll take the Lick. Isn't Plague Man still better than Ren? Uh, I don't think so. I think, I think it may be worth it to try to get some land cycling. I don't think that's likely to come up a whole lot. But I think it's more likely to come up than, say, them having no way to kill a two, a two toughness creature. Alright, so let's see if they've got the mutagenic growth. Looks like they do. Yep. Oh, that was good. So let's do that. Um, do I want to escalate it? I think I want to escalate it once. So we'll two mode it, minus two, minus two, take an instant or sorcery, you, you. What I'm discarding is not super clear. Um, I think it's between the land and the Kalidus. The land is, is an interesting discard, because like to cast the Liliana, we need a different land anyway, so this land doesn't really help us. But if we discard the land, we're pretty far from Kalidus, and Kalidus could be an, an easy way for us to, to stabilize. I, I think I want to discard the land, because Kalidus is powerful, or if we, if we can get to it while we're at parity, Kalidus could just win by itself. Especially if they've got an answer to our first threat. So I think I'm going to ditch the mountain, but it, it feels weird having a 4-drop kind of stranded. Wow, we bricked on a spell. But I guess we got some info. They've got a lot of threats and a relic. Jeez. Their hand is uh, quite good for what we're doing here. So I guess they're going to go uh, Sprite Dragon. It would make sense to do that before casting Relic. 
Oh, they just remanded more foes so they can get the Storm Ring. I mean, we could punish them here. If we can find their Black Source for the Liliana, well, it'll still die to either of their 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 haste creatures, but answering Stormwing is really important. We wouldn't be able to do it with with more than one creature on the board. So I think this play from the opponent was was on the poor side. They're they're giving us a chance to really punish them. That said, we are unable to punish them. Yeah, we wouldn't have been we we wouldn't have been able to double spell even had I kept the mountain. I guess we would have playing the goyf, but like not casting either of these. They drew a tarn, alright. So this is their hand. So I guess they're just gonna go sprite dragon relic attack for five. Sorry, six. It's a lot. And like we can kill the sprite now, but then this thing's still alive and it's insulated via swift spear. That's not a black source. I mean, this is at least a land to work towards, uh, work towards the Kalidas. If they've got Spell Pierce or something, I'm gonna want to kill this now. And I can't really block the Swift Spear because they've got the Relic, so I guess I'm attacking. They could, I guess, target themselves. Do they have any unique types? We've got land instant sorcery so they can remove creature which they can't all right we get to it for five or four <laughs> there's only one ravine in the deck too so we we literally have three i think there are only four lands in the deck that don't make black in some way it's these three and then the uh the forgotten cave we've got three of those four though <laughs> Okay, maybe maybe we're just dead. Oh yeah, they just drew double bolt. We are literally just dead. Oof. All right, yeah, they killed us quick. I think that matchup is probably favored for us, but our mana was on the awkward side. We could we could not punish the opponent and play that Liliana. I mean, like if we were able to stick that Liliana there and kill the Stormwing, I think we're very ahead. But uh, we, we did not have the uh, the third land that was a black source. Yeah, it really is just those four lands that don't make black, right? L literally those four, we had three of them. We lost the die roll, but our hand's good. We can interact on one. If we want to stick Bob, we can. Otherwise, if we need to interact on two, we can. Our hand's got powerful late game, so we're just going to hope we don't get run over. Uh-oh. Well, I guess we're bobbing. Push isn't going to do anything. They've got Power Plant and Tron. Feeling pretty dead. They've got the uh, the Worm Coils as well. E even if we had a single Thoughtseize, we couldn't beat it. Let's just go to next. So far, not great. Not gonna lie. All right, so Tron. We've got we've got a pretty obvious sideboard plan for Tron though. We've got these four Aces. These two fine support cards. We can for sure cut all of the uh, the one for one removal. And that's about it. Seems fine to me. <laughs> See you later, Spunky. Yep, the sand looks good. Um, oh wait, we don't have red. <laughs> well, I mean, we've got we've got Inquisition on one and Tatarma Wave on two, which is one of our better starts. 
And any red source means we've got wildfire as well. I think this is this is still a keep despite no red. We're just gonna have to get a little lucky. We have mulligan to five. That makes it a little bit easier. They've got one Tron land sphere scrying. I, they already have forests, so I think I've just got to take the scrying because if they draw a Tron land, that finds the other copy or the other the other piece. All right, so sooner the better on a red source. Perfect. Still, I'm still gonna deploy Goyf here. I need to get a clock going. I'm doing a lot more damage if I do this first, and damage is is the uh, is the is the resource I'm looking for here so they reveal the tower tower of power all right so if they if they just have the Tron land um, we, we could just die so I mean there's there's a uh, consideration to just casting bone crusher as a four three What's up, uh, Six Smooth? Thanks for the the raid. Welcome, everybody. But I think it's probably best to just kill this thing now. Um, if I draw Inquisition or Thoughtseize, I'm going to want to have held Overgrown Team up. I guess if I draw Tapped Land, that would be the reason to Wildfire first. But I think just holding up a Black Source is going to be higher upside. So let's kill that. And I'm going to kill the Tower because that's one that they played more recently. I know some people say to uh, always hit anything but the tower because if, if they have tower and they need to search for a land, they have to like tap tower to do it. But uh, they they found they found this more recently, so I think the odds they've got another one of tower are are fewer than the odds that they've that that tapping a land to find the land is going to be more relevant. I think killing the more recent one is better. Bolivian stone, okay. They didn't play another Tron land, so that's cool. Gonna want to be careful how much I overextend until this, though. Ashok is interesting, but they don't actually have a way to search for anything yet. I think I'm gonna play a Bone Crusher here, literally because it represents four damage. Four damage before they're able to pop this, that is. And there's already a land in the yard, so I don't need to fetch immediately. So literally just playing this because it's four damage. And then end of turn, I'll get, I guess, another red source and a black source, so Blood Crypt. They found the Tron land and a Karn, okay. Well, luckily I can kill this Karn. Don't know what they get here. If they get something like a bridge, I could be in trouble. There is a bridge. Alright, so we're going to need to find a way to kill an artifact sooner rather than later so as is we've got seven powers worth of stuff in play if I draw another way to burn the opponent it becomes interesting where I actually want to attack because if I go at the opponent's face maybe I can really pressure them all right, well, that, that's not the case. I still don't think I'm Ashiocking here. It could be problematic if they find, like, a Sylvan Scrying. If they find exactly a Sylvan Scrying, they could complete Tron and go Karn. Playing Ashiok would prevent that, but then O-Stone takes care of it. There's not yet a creature in the yard. Yeah, Bunker, the Bunker just started a fad. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that it's 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 been creating some discussion so yeah i think i'm gonna lead on croaksy here i'm definitely not gonna commit another permanent into the oblivion stone although if they're playing bridge they're not popping stone i think let's let's lead on the croaksa black red this leaves up the option to, to run in six or stomp so let, we'll see what they discard off of this because if they discard either of these, I'm happy. But then if they discard their third card, then I guess okay. You've got an amazing thing to tell. I'm all ears. 
So Goyf is now 5 power. We can attack for 9, put the opponent to 5. We then just have a stomp, which means the opponent's at 3. There are only 2 bolts in the deck. Is it safer to still just kill the Karn? If we kill the Karn, we attack them for 5 down to 9, but then we could get boned by this bridge. It's probably still just safer to kill the Karn. But I mean, putting them down to a virtual 3 is nice. Because we could even just kill them with Ren and Six over the course of a few turns. The other option is I could delay the decision by a turn and just attack the opponent's face with both and then stomp the, the Karn to keep it off of an activation. But then the burn plan looks a lot weaker. So I think I'm just going to split it here. And then say go, hold up a stomp. So you brewed a cat tribal list on the first set of the list. You beat, you beat Etron and also beat Asperzel. That's exciting. There's the bridge. All right, well, I guess, uh, I, I guess I sh maybe should hold the stomp because uh, it still goes upstairs. It can, it can still hit walkers. Let's just untap. So yeah, drawing both will make me feel silly for having attacked that. That's an interesting draw. It, it can almost attack. It, it may more importantly hit a way to deal with the, uh, the ensnaring bridge though. So I guess we're going to Hail Mary it. And then really try to hit a shatter effect. We've got Colgon's Command and Pillage. Inquisition, not exactly. Well, we get to see your other card. Jeez, it's an Ulamog. All right, well, the moment we can we can pop this bridge, we might just win. Unless they O-stone us. <laughs> yeah, if, you've won, if you're one to know against a deck that is 100% win rate, right? That's true. All right, so now they're going to put the Fate Counter on this, right? Unless we can pop it this turn. I guess we can pop it this turn. That's got to be the play, right? I could go for a Tron land, but then I feel like they still eventually just beat us. Like, if, if I go for the bridge now, they're forced to pop the stone, but then at least I can maybe follow up with some more stuff. Or even just Kroxa. Kroxa will end this game in, like, almost one shot. I think I have to make them use it. Committing more to the board just doesn't do anything. Damn, imagine if we hit this with Blood Braid. Brutal. All right, so they just have to remember that they've got an Oblivion Stone in play. And then we're hope we're going to hope that they don't just top deck the, the last Tron piece to get one of these things into play this turn. And we can't escape Kroxa because unfortunately basic forest. So can you draw a tower off the top? Another Karn. That's problematic too. Hopefully they don't have another bridge type effect. We can run in six and stomp this to kill it. But whatever they get is going to be problematic. Any other land, even if not completing Tron, means they can worm coil me, which I'm going to have a hard time beating. They got bridge to stop the Kroxa, I guess. I'm kind of okay with that. Goyf was a real good draw, but I feel like I kind of have to, to, to beat this Karn now. I guess what I could do is in order to, to start applying some pressure, I could just play Goyf and Stomp because that, that'll delay this by a turn anyway. So let's do that. Go. Oh, they just drew the Tron land. Of course they did. Why, why wouldn't it be on top? Brutal. 
Anywho, here's the list. Yeah, I don't think Grafticker's Cage is a very good take there. They, they might... I, they should have almost definitely gotten a Worm Coil engine, um, assuming they had it available on their sideboard. Because, again, any land means Worm Coil, and I can't beat a Worm Coil. But, yeah, obviously drawing, drawing the Tron land off of the top was the one thing we just absolutely could not beat. They've always got it on top, though, right? How do I deal as a Jun player with Tron? Uh, we've got things like Pillage, we've got Cleansing Wildfire, and we've got Damping Sphere. But after Modern Horizons 2, we may also have uh, that new dragon, which is exciting. Speaking about exciting, not this hand. Forgotten Cave Cycles, we can interact on one. We've got some, we can, we can threaten the opponent's hand afterwards, but this is just not going to be good. They're playing Lurus, so probably, I guess, a Prowess or Shadow variant. More likely Shadow. This hand's is not going to be good. This hand's much better, though. And I've, I've had a lot of people ask me why I play Forgotten Cave over Baronmore. This is the reason why, and it looks like we're going to see it come up this game. I think, assuming we're against Shadow, we're going to want as, as much removal as possible. So let's bottom the Kroxa in favor of all of our ways to kill stuff. Dark Slick Shore. So I guess it's not Shadow. Is it Mill? Vile. Interesting. So definitely a creature deck. It Could it be Rogues? Well, in the absence of a creature to kill, I guess I'll play Forgotten Cave. But having drawn Black Leaf Cliffs makes that a little bit easier. So to play Ren and Six, I'm going to be Fetch Shocking next turn anyway. So I think I'm just going to lead on the Mire, because in the event they don't play something that I want to kill, I can get the fetch out of the way painlessly. Played Cavern of Souls. Naming? Merfolk. Alright, that makes some sense. And Archie Jarch, thanks for the follow. I appreciate the support. So this will be Overgrown Tomb. And say no. And then we can now uh, run in six. Another bolt versus the supposed Merfolk player. Feels like it's gonna be pretty strong. And I'm aware that, like, they can violence something on one, and then they could attack my Ren and Six, but I've got plenty of removal spells to start defending it, assuming they just can't outright kill it this turn. Flash in a 2 2. Can't even counter it. So we're looking pretty good so far. We're missing a threat, but we, we can kill just about everything, as long as we're careful to not die to Lurus. Spreading seas is annoying, but I mean, we, we've got pretty much perfect mana. It's actually kind of a stone rain, funny enough, right? Because no, this doesn't cast any, an island doesn't cast any of it. All right, um... I guess I'll just get basic mountain, to be honest. We can get green source later. I do want to fetch now, though, so I can continue getting run and six value. And I think I want to hold up double removal spell. I guess I could really just wait on this. Yeah, let's just wait. There's there's no reason to do it, like, actually right now. Um, sure, maybe there's something I want to kill faster than a trickster. 
That's annoying. I guess it resolves though. They would have to flash in two lords to defend their stuff versus my burn spells, so I don't think I have to do it quite yet. Yeah, this is being this is gonna be a wild league for sure. They kept it at two. Makes sense considering they've got nothing that costs three. I'm gonna try to not use a removal spell on this because Ren and Six could kill it. Oh, I should have definitely responded to that. I guess I can still just bolt this, then kill something else while it attacks, so we're actually just fine. Uh, I'm, I want them to uh, commit their attackers in, in, a, in a direction before I start killing stuff. Yeah, they're, they're just going for the Ren. So... I guess if we if we just go for the bolt here, they could they could flash in another lord. But then I could also just bolt the new lord. But then Renin Six dies, so I think I'm gonna go for the attackers here, which means I can push this, bolt that. Alternatively, I could just push this, bolt that, let this get hit for two, and then ping it down. But I feel like keeping Renin Six around has some value, especially with Forgotten Cave. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna favor just killing the attackers. Then I'll I'll lead here. Putting this here because uh, it doesn't get saved by a lightning bolt, or it would get saved with another lord. So I'll put the bolt on the thing with two toughness. They can't flash in two lords. Again, I could just kill this, but then if they've got another Lord Renin 6 still dies, I'd rather keep the Ren alive. What's up, Mark? What's up, JDX? Oh, you're saying hi to Mark. I said hi to you already. Yeah, right. <laughs> My instinct when I see someone say hey in chat is, oh, hi, I haven't said hi to you yet. All right, I guess we're just going to lead on that. I can do it off of Basic Swamp. There's no reason to get green now. They could also just Spreading Seize my green. So I guess we'll just lead here. See what's up. Also, if they ha if they feel like violing in another silver gill adept, maybe we can kill it in response. Just flashing the trickster. Sure. I wonder if we even get to take something here. <laughs> Hopefully, we even get to take something here. All right, well, we'll get to kill something, so that much is good. We can we can kill the Lord and then ping that. Nice of the opponent to mill an enchantment and an artifact. So now our things will, our glaze will be nice and large. Oh, we do get to take something, cool. Sure, thanks. All right, so I, I think I'm gonna use the Renin Six to kill this thing now. That unfortunately means that their last thing is gonna kill the Renin Six though, so is that a situation I want to avoid? I don't think I can avoid that, unfortunately. Alright, so I guess this just means that I'm going to play a land and terminate. Terminate's the more expensive thing, so I should probably just terminate. Yeah, let's just terminate. So let's kill this. And then we can kill the 2-1. And then our Renin Six will die, but Renin Six is gonna die if we let if we let them just attack anyway. So we have dismantled them with the bolt left over. <laughs> with cats, you only do you don't do you know, the only math you do is addition. That's funny. All right, well this is a good draw for us. They, they kind of smartly vial, put their Vile up to three, so now they get to uh, put Laris into hand and Vile it in and play a Lord. So that's all kind of scary. But uh, we can still at least bolt the Laris. Alright, so we're we have lots of good draws now. I'm assuming they're killing this run in six, finally. Yep, makes sense to me. 
Bolt will go out the Luris, and then we just have to deal with whether they're on board and we should be fine. Note, their things are unblockable because we've got an island. Hmm. I guess let's lead on a cycle. See what we can find. Yikes. Alright, well, it might be harder than I was hoping. Alright, this can get a green source. At least we don't have to be scared of this vial anymore, right? Because there's nothing that they could vial in at 3 given a companion of Luris. Do I think the new Jun uh, hierarchy goes into Boomer Jun? I think it will fit into Jun, but not as it is currently built. I think other things are going to have to change to uh, try to make the power level higher. I think I think if you just swap it 4 for 4, it's not going to be as good as if you make other modifications. Like you, other things are definitely gonna have to change to make it better, but a, as the deck exists now, no, I don't think it will be good enough. Chalice for one, interesting. I guess they're just not playing a bunch of the one drops. Is their entire deck just twos then? I'll get stomping around because I got swamp in hand. We need to find something like Kolagon's command here, right? I guess we don't, we don't even have a creature to get back, so it doesn't really matter. Liliana will at least kill one thing. Let's use my island. We're either killing a lord or a 3-3, three three, so either way we're taking 3 power off the board. And then my one life from this fetch land might come up, so I'll just play the swamp and intend on discarding the mire if it gets to that point. Did you ever revisit the Esper Shadow Blade deck? No, I, I have not revisited. It was fun though. Are you, are you talking about the one with Stoneforge and Shadow in it? Oh, they found another Lord. Yuck. Alright, so there goes Liliana. I think the opponent maybe should have even just attacked me. It's kind of close. So now Colgon's Command or Bone Crusher don't do it, unfortunately. There it is. We could play it as a 4 3, but they both just have Island Lock. Alright, sideboard. I mean, Merfolk feels like it's got to be a pretty okay matchup. Plague Engineer, Brutality. Fatal push. They're playing Luris, so I guess some consideration to a number of spell bombs. Then Kalidus is also probably going to be pretty strong if we can get it going. Pillage is interesting. We saw the opponents playing Vile and a Chalice, so maybe Pillage is actually good enough to get in there. Um, on the play, I like the Dark Confidants. I think the Croxes are going to be a little bit too mana intensive. I think I'd rather stay low to the ground with the interaction. That said, Thoughtseize is a horrid draw, so let's cut those. But Inquisition, probably fine. Um, also, if they Spreading Seize us, that makes our mana really bad for Kroxa purposes. I think on the draw, I'll probably shave Liliana's, but on the play, it's probably good enough. Let's cut more top end in favor of being low to the ground. Um, what else? I think I'm gonna cut a goif. Like I do need to find. I need do need to have a clock, but I think just just quantity of resources is gonna be more important. And then Liliana is kind of just the worst removal spell, so maybe I really do just cut two of those. Everything else kills something, or attacks. Let's do that. Make that current, and you'll pay me. All right, we we can talk. You can send me. You can send me a whisper if you want. Well, we can figure something out. I did a, a donation, my first donation deck, kind of recently, and it was it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Sounds good. Um, we could get spreading seized and to be sad. They've mulliganed. Ha ha. They've mulliganed again. Okay. So I think I'm going to lead on the ravine. 
It means I can't push on one, but I could always just use double removal spell on the following turn. And then if they don't play something on one, like if they just play an Aether Vial here, I'm gonna really wish I had been able to Bob. Which this will which this will allow me to do. So I like Ravine first. Aether Vial. There you go. So I'm, I'm happy that I have access to Bob. I would love to just draw Black Leaf Cliff. Black Leaf Cliffs would be the nut draw. Hiya. That's almost Black Leaf Cliffs. But I think I'm actually going to still lead on the Peatland. Because if they Spreading sees us, I'm going to want to know what color I need to get. Sounds good. I'll, I'll take a look after uh, I go offline. Again, we're pretty heavy on removal, but we've we've at least got something that attacks this time. The one for one removal is going to look really good, especially when they're down two cards to start with. And again, we saw that they're playing Chalice. Uh, in their deck so that probably indicates they're not playing many things that cost one so maybe i can attack into this vial but even even if i am not if even if i am worried about attacking into the vial i have i have spot removal to break up whatever they could do reveal the blood crypt so that's good and drew a foothills okay well, I think if i'm going to fetch here i am most likely to want to fetch for a basic swamp so I'm just, I think I'm just going to go Mire and attack. And then if they want to throw stuff in front of it, I'll bolt or push it out of the way. Probably bolt because again, they're not playing anything that it doesn't, it, that push doesn't kill without revolt. All right. So we'll say okay to that. I guess the, the upside of, of bolt is that bolt can go face in a race. So that could be relevant. I mean, short of a bunch of lords, I'm not really worried about getting blown out by a bolt. So I think I think I will actually use the push for bolt maybe going to face considerations. And then I guess if I'm fetching anyway for a basic swamp, I'll do that now so I don't have to tap the peatland. I would really like to keep this bob alive and ticking. It is a 2-1 with no abilities. Yeah, I mean, Bob Bob could be, like, meaner than average, but short of it doming me for, like, 12 or 15 on its own, I feel pretty good about this game. And I, I'm going to save Brutality for when I can use it as a removal spell. And then I, we may even escalate this some number of times, given all of the extra cards that Bob is going to Bob is gonna end up affording us. Silvergill revealing Silvergill. Okay. I mean this this is this is the way they can climb back in it, because they're they're down on resources, but these these are all going plus one. So what I might do here is just bolt the first thing, and then on my next turn I can use the Kologon's command. What is this? So whenever an opponent shuffles their library, you can put a counter on it. Okay, that's cool. Um, so what am I killing between this and that? I guess it's still probably the Silver Gill. Yeah, I mean it's 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 still probably just the Silver Gill. I have one way to shuffle, so I guess as soon as I fetch once, assuming I don't kill this immediately, but I I do plan on killing it immediately, though, right? Because I'm gonna Kologon Skin Man next turn to kill Vile, so let's just kill this. Feste 333, thank you for the follow. I appreciate the support. Let's untap. And then again, planning on Colgon's commanding these two, to which they'll probably put a vial in. We revealed Blood Braid. Not ideal, but happy to see it. We're still at a very healthy 14. Goyf also quite good. 
So this actually presents a decision now, right? Before, I think it was a clear, just like, kill this, kill this. But now that we've found a two-mana threat, I almost want to just use the Brutality to, like, de to deploy a Tarmogwaif on top of it all. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And then do I want to escalate it some amount? I think I'm going to escalate it at least once, probably to drain. So we'll do two modes, kill a thing, drain you. Uh, minus two, minus two, drain you. Cast, so that, that. And then I think I'm actually just going to discard the foothills. I'll shock the blood crypt going down to 13 after I'm gaining the two. And I, that all feels very good. Okay, and then is it is it possible that I want to just attack into the silver gill to trade? I mean, at this point, maybe I just offer the trade. I mean, the, the Bob is going to keep me so far ahead, though, that may, maybe it is just silly. You know what? I think I am going to serve it up because we're, we're really ahead on resources as is, and my other cards are going to serve to only make me pull farther ahead. So if, if, if they want to continue one-for-one one trading... With the card that's already four for one, I feel fine. And then if they let this hit get through, excellent, I'll just play a Tarmogoyf. Um, if I kill Vile with the ability on the stack, does that does does it use LKI? I'm not sure what you mean by LKI. You're saying you don't think I trade? I think a trade here is probably fine. Because, like, I'm about to be... Bloodbraid and Colgon's Command versus two of their random cards with a Goyf in play. And that feels like a game where I'm very ahead. I mean, I could also just be very ahead as long as the Dark Confidant gets to live. But having drawn two more sources of pressure here, I feel better about trading. If Had I not found more pressure, I think I have to keep the Bob. But finding more pressure makes me feel more comfortable doing this. Last on information. Yes, it would go off of last on information. So they would still get to put something in that costs three, I believe. Or however many counters were on it. Mutavault, sure. Yeah, they, they, they do have the Luris. But, uh... They did not take up the Vial. We drew Forest. So, Forest is interesting. But I think I, I actually want to just use this Colagon's command... I can shatter the vial, have the opponent discard a card, buy back Bob, play Bob, be at 12. That all seems very good. Alternatively, I could just turn on the gas and try to kill them. I I'm really not scared about this vial. Like, they, they could do some tricky stuff, but I think I'm better better off using this Colagon's command to kill an actual creature. So I think I'm going to use this turn to Blood Braid. It'll feel unfortunate if we hit a spot removal spell. But that, that's about the only fail case here. We hit, we hit Colgon's command anyway. Alright, so... Um, I'll have you discard I'll shock the vial. Um, where is this dude? There's so many modes on this thing. Not return, not return, not return. Discard a card artifact. You, you. Best of both worlds. Didn't even vial anything in, and they discarded a land. All right, so that feels good. Um, question now is, do I want to take a hit for two if they don't want to block? Probably fine. If their last card is a Merfolk Trickster, I could get very punished, though, because, like, they could, they could just block this, trade for my board. But even if they do that, I've got a Colgon's Command left over. Let's jam. Like, I can still just buy back the Goyf and replay the Goyf. If they've got the Trickster, it, it'll be unfortunate for this turn, but I still feel ahead as long as their next draw step isn't extremely lucky. Yeah, and then obviously if the attack works, which it's more likely than not to do, we're just very ahead. So this feels good. Opponent finding, finding another land. And now, now they're forced to block, but I could even just Colgon's command their thing out of the way. And they didn't have the Trickster last turn, so I'm assuming they don't have it this turn either. 
Not that we needed the help, but here's a fatal push. Now if they animate to block, I'll just push it. Or they could give up, I guess. All right. Um, on the draw, Liliana does get weaker. Is there something I want to swap for it? Not really. Kind of just want to keep this. I could bring another spell bomb to Hedge versus the Luris plan, but two two seems like kind of a lot already. Let's just do this. Being on the draw versus spreading thieves is dangerous, so I'll be sure to play in a way where I don't get absolutely blown out by it. Yikes. This hand would be very good if we can, if we can guarantee two, uh, two lands off of the top, one of which is a black source. We're on the draw, we can bolt on one. Any black source means that we can maybe just pull ahead. This is This is very high risk, very high reward. Leave Mulligan to six. I, I think I have to... I, I think my average draw is likely to beat their average draw. So while that's the case, I think there's not really need to take this risk. So let's ship it. This is better. We get Inquisition on one, have a way to kill something, and then hopefully Bob can refill. And then I'll bottom stomping ground. Yeah, I don't think it's unreasonable, but I do think, like I said, while, while our average draw beats their average draw, I think it's unnecessary to take a risk when our, our, our average hand will be good against them. Alright, well, our decision is looking excellent now that we've drawn our, our ace. So maybe now we prioritize a way to, uh, to get rid of whatever would kill our, our engineer. So they've got the trickster again, they've got deprive. They got Silvergill Adept and they've got Fatal Push. So Fatal Push does kill the Engineer. So maybe I just take that. But Deprive counters the Engineer as well. So given that they've got two answers, maybe I should just go for a creature take here. And if that's the case, it's almost definitely Silvergill because that's the one that draws a card. But I mean, I've got, I've got two creatures that I really want to survive. So I, I do think I will just take the Fatal Push. Like had I ha if they if they had if they had two answers to one threat then maybe I think I don't take an answer but if if taking an answer means that one of my things maybe gets to live then I think there's a better argument to taking their answer. This this could be very wrong though I think I think if I'm not taking that it's almost definitely a silver gill. They didn't find a land they could still violin a one. In fact they almost definitely will. So I guess we're going to play Dark Confidant here. Feeling okay. And then I'm going to be sure to shock to play the Engineer because if I if I search this thing's going to grow to a 2-2 two -two and then um, the minus one minus one no longer kills it by itself, right? So they're going to be able to put in a silver gill, but it's not going to look very good in the face of a plague engineer. And we're, we're going to hope that they just don't find lands because it, it, just, just having them be as slow as possible will be the best case possible. This might be silver gill like redrawing for a land. So we would like to avoid the opponent finding a land here. Though the worst case here would be they find a land and have a lord. Because then we can't Plague Engineer to empty them out. And we have avoided it. Also a land means that maybe they can maybe just counter the Plague Engineer, which would also be a problem. 
Although, if it's not an island, they can't counter, because you have to return an island, right? Or any land, okay. So, yeah, so any, any land would be bad for us. But it looks like they may have missed. Cool. Alright, so we're going to go to... 16 to play the engineer and we've drawn right in six Jeez. all right so what what should we name with this thing here survey says Boink. Do you want me to name wizards? Wizard. Wizard. We could have named wizard. Yeah, you're right. We could have named wizard. That would have been funny. Yeah, I'm feeling like we can't lose here unless Bob domes us for four or four times in a row. Ready for the Colagons command? Just like maximum, maximum punishment. That's good too. That's good too. Uh, if they want a vial and a two, I'll just shoot it out of the way. immediately dies yep here we go pithing needle mute vault okay take four yeah confidant is a wizard it would not hit our own stuff though plague engineer doesn't affect our own creatures all right so i believe the play here is i guess if i if i if i cast run in six here i can't actually hold up a bolt without paying a bunch of life so, I mean, it, it's probably fine to just cast a spell bomb. I mean, I, I could also just cast the Bone Crusher because it'll end the game faster. And I think that's actually what I want to do here. I, I just want to end the game. So, let, let's cast Bone Crusher just as a 4 or 3. If we really need to, we can fetch Shock to Bolt. I could have fetched a basic to hold up a red. Actually, not even true because I've, I've only got one red source. Can't fetch a Mountain with a Verdant. This just feels great, though. We've got him dead in two turns. Let, let's just end the game. I, I, I'm not really afraid of a sweeper of any kind. They hit the land that doesn't cast Deprive. <laughs> okay. Not that Deprive would be good here because we're already way ahead on board. They put a vial up to three. So we only have to be worried about them violating something that costs one. Because again, they can't have anything that costs three. Alright, sounds good. Here's the deck. The new legendary Murfolk God. I think that God will be cool. I don't know how, God, how good it will be. It's definitely going to be good in Murfolk. How about this hand? We don't have anything to do on one. But we've got all the card advantage engines in the world. And we've got a bunch of decent clocks. And we're on the play. So this will get... Probably actually Stomping Ground. Because the first land that I want to fetch um, after getting it back is probably Basic Swamp. So, Stomping Ground, Black Leaf Cliffs, Basic Swamp makes the mana perfect. Ooh, is it Burn? If it's Burn, I really don't want to play the Bob here. So, I think I'm actually just going to play the Renin 6. Anyway, I mean, ver ver against Arid Mesa, Renin 6 is probably just going to be better anyway, because it's less susceptible to literally any removal spell. And, like, we need more lands anyway, so... Let's get the run in six going. And then if it is burn, I don't want to play the Goyf either because this would be the window where it could get bolted. 
We saw that burn is uh, increasingly popular these days, so maybe, maybe it is burn. I guess Sacred Foundry will give it away. Maybe it's Prowess again. It could also be Breach. Those would be the two most common. All right, and I guess it could still be either of those. Mutagenic Growth would clear the Ren and Six. Okay. I mean, we, we kind of three for one, right? Like we got a card back, we ate a card here. So, I mean, this feels fine. We've got plenty of ways to kill the, uh, the Sprite Dragon. So I think I'm gonna stomp. Actually, no, that's a lie. Uh, I, I think I'm going to uh, Fatal Push here because um, one mana spell means I can also cast Tarmogoyf. And I, if, if the opponent has a Stormwing entity, I'm gonna wanna have the Bolt for that. So I doubt they're playing Push main deck, but they could be playing Vapor Snag. And if they're, if they're a threat light, then they may wanna Vapor Snag this to save it. So it's probably just best to do this now. And then I'll deploy a Tarmogoyf. So this is going pretty well. Smooth sailing so far. Could still be Breach, right? Oh, I guess no, it can't be. They played Mutagenic Growth. So Stormwing would be a problem. I mean, we can bolt it and still have the Stomp, as long as it's not exactly another Mutagenic Growth, because that would be plus three, plus three. We should be okay. Yeah, it's in Modern Horizons 2. The, the new Merfolk thing. It's like as long as you control two artifacts, it's indestructible. And it's a three mana, three, four, and it's like if you if you attack with whenever whenever it attacks, you draw a card, I think. Alright, so let's start here. If this just works, which I doubt it will, we can play the second Tarmoglyph that we've drawn. If this doesn't work, we can go for a stomp. They're gonna snag my goyf. Okay. I guess we'll stomp. I could redeploy a Goyf, but I think killing this is probably going to be pretty important. Mutagenic Growth will break this up, but at least they will have done all of this um, not while attacking. Alright, we killed the thing, which is nice. Another thing... Dart, yikes! Dart, Dart's really bad too because we can't even Colagons command this to uh, to try to save to for because they they could just they could just lava Dart in order to save it. That said, I could still just lava Colagons command now, but that doesn't actually save any damage either, right? Because this this keeps the counter. So I think the play here is Inquisition plus Gwaif. And We're gonna have to try to race this thing. Well. So Lava Dart represents more counters. But taking the Lava Dart also feels bad. So I guess I'm just taking the Bolt. And then playing a Goyf. I was feeling pretty comfortable with this game, but the opponent has had threat after threat. Which definitely makes it hard. Yikes, Opt was a good one. Yeah, the new Morphok seems good. Seems good. And they found another one. Jeez. Well, we can Colagons command that one. Yeah, they're just, they're just pushing damage right now. So we're not just dead. We're actually we actually go to one uh, after we put this well lava dart in the yard, and this gets one counter. Ooh, we do terminate. Terminate means we can kill the bigger one. So like, if I have them discard a card and kill this, we, we still just die to literally any spell. So I think I've got to 
terminate this one. The issue with that, though, is they can still just lava dart us twice. This hits us for four. Where that, that still puts us to one and has us dying to any other spell. The only difference, though, is they would actually have to spend the mana on it. So if they draw a two mana spell like Mana Morphos, we don't die. I guess no, because they could still just Mana Morphos into the Lava Dart. So I think we actually have to Colagon's command here and hope they don't have a spell on top. Like even even a Swift Spear would kill us though is the issue. So like am I am I really leaving Tarmogoyf back? Can I can I reasonably win if I Colagon's command here? Like have them discard Lava Dart, shock the two two, attack. They can put me to one. But I'm only hitting them down to nine. Uh, that's not even lethal over a couple turns. I mean, I, I guess the, the terminate line means that if they're going to put me to one, if they're going to put me to one, they have to like use most of the resources to do it. But then this thing is out of range of Colgon's command. So, I mean, if I want to have answers that line up with both of their, both of their threats, I think I have to Colgon's command and then just hope they don't draw a spell. Or a uh, Swift Spear. But I mean, I think I have to attack because if I'm playing around exactly Swift Spear, I'm just giving them more, fi more time to find something else that kills me, like a burn spell or any spell. Yeah, like we we've got to attack. All right, and then did they draw Manamorphos for real? Yeah, I mean, any any spell kills us here. That doesn't kill us. I mean, they have to be afraid of us killing them, so maybe they have to block. I mean, Scrying 2 is painful. It went bottom-bottom, though. Because if we've got a bolt, they do just die. But if, if they read that we don't have it, we can't kill both of their things. So we, we need to draw... If, if we draw a bolt or a push, we'll be in a good spot. That's about it. Ren and six. Not exactly. All right, well, this feels like a straightforward hope you block. I mean, uh, the Liliana also would punish them for blocking here, so this block is not trivial. There are, there are a lot of things that could punish this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope they block, though. If they don't block, they win. Like they they have to think what is there is there a is there a window that I had where I would have cast the lightning bolt where I didn't because if there was a window yeah they 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 had the soul read unfortunately I I don't think I gave them a reason to think to to believe that we didn't have a bolt so I think no block is risky but I mean if they they just win if we don't have it so. Brutal. Alright, well, same sideboard plan as before. Uh, these don't kill much. Neither do these. Yeah, I mean, like, like I, I have no other play, right? Like, it's, it's, it's a forced bluff. So, in, in that it's a forced bluff, it's almost not a bluff. This hand's good. This hand's ideal. We've got three. We've got discard on one, two ways to kill things. Liliana at the top and a threat in Bone Crusher. So overall, pretty nice. They've even mulliganed. That's good. So they've got expressive iteration, soul scar, mutagenic growth, opt. So it's it's definitely between either soul scar or iteration. Given that I've got three ways to kill stuff, I think I'm leading towards just taking the two for one. Had they have had they had multiple threats, I think I would take the soul scar because again they can't really kill us if they can't have creatures to attack with. But we've got three answers to their one threat, so I think I'm gonna take the multi for one. 
just like let them play their thing. And we, we know about mutagenic growth. I, I could I could actually just stomp to, to bait it out. But I think I should probably just take the trades so that way I could I could try to Liliana onto an empty board. So that, that has me fatal pushing. And they are a threat light, so if they've got a vapor snag, I think they'd probably snag their own thing. So let's just do this now so they can't have that option. Yeah, they 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 lose to a lot if they if they block right. The issue, the issue is we don't we don't really have the uh, the ability to make any other play. So I, th I think the opponent the opponent may have just identified that we're making that play no matter what. So I mean, us making that play is not necessarily an indication of uh, them having it or us having it. Hey, control think control freak. Thanks for the raid. How was your stream? We're we're doing some jund things over here as uh, as we tend to do. <laughs> All right, we do get to Liliana onto an empty board here. It's 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 kind of curious if we actually want to do it. We may want to save this just to kill a Stormwing. We don't have another easy way to kill it, and uh, the opponent, especially knowing we've got they've got mutagenic growth, they they could they play like any Swift Spear, any any uh, Sprite Dragon, and they could just immediately kill the Liliana. So I don't think I'm gonna play the Liliana just right into it. What I think I might do though. So I might just play Bone Crusher as a four three, get a get a get a nice little clock going. Ooh, very very proud of this. That's from scratch. Nice nice. I appreciate it. Oh, I got juice too. Give me a kiss. Thanks. <laughs> I got breakfast for dinner. All right, pass. You managed a trophy with Jun Shadow, so I wanted to be sure you sent good Jun colored vibes away. I appreciate it. And Boy Drazi, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. All right, so this is why we didn't play Liliana, right? Because they could have just killed her thing immediately. We want the Liliana to kill something. Ooh, I got bacon. Yeah, I got Brenner. We're just doing this now? That's aggressive. Wow. Really glad I held this Liliana. I'll go to 12. I guess you could flash this back and hit me to to 10. Surprised they didn't considering how all in they went. Maybe they're keeping this just so they could uh, get future storm wings into play easily. That would make sense. So let's uh, kill this Liliana, or kill this creature with a Liliana. And jam for four. Yeah, that, that was very aggressive from the opponent. This, this is true. Hey, yo. Don't think I'm changing much. I'm gonna mute real fast so I can do some munching. Okie dokie. You can't keep this. They didn't keep either, though. Can keep this. Um. I, I kind of want to just keep the curve of both Goyf Liliana. We do have a tap land, though, which could make it awkward. I think it's like we've got two of our basic red sources, so this has to get overgrown tomb, right? I think I still have to keep the Liliana for Stormwing reasons. And then I'll, I'll lead on, I guess I'll just lead on Mountain, right? Because I kind of want to kill the first thing. Soul Scar is annoying. 
And I guess I'll just lead on Bolt here. I don't want them to, uh, if they've got the mutagenic growth, I don't want them also attacking with it. And they apparently don't have it, so that much is good. Alright, well at least now we can Liliana next turn. So I get Overgrown Tomb now. I could get Basic Mountain next turn. I do want to play the Tarmogoyf. I, I could just Kroxa to hit the opponent's resources while they're low. But I think establishing my own clock might be good too. That said... Maybe attacking isn't worth as much when they've got Stormwing and literally just knocking any number of spells out of the opponent's hand might be important. Either way, this is Overgrown Tomb. So I think the tiebreaker is going to be what puts me in the best position with, with intending on playing a Liliana next turn. And if I want the Liliana to be the best possible... I, I kind of want them to actually commit a lot of spells to the board to grow the Sprite Dragon so I can blow it out. So I think I'm, I'm leaning towards Goyf. And plus, like, may, maybe maybe I can nab the last card out of their hand with Kroxa so it's less of a decision. Yeah, this looks like it will be a close one. I'm really going to hope that this Sprite Dragon can't get huge. I mean, that's that's the beginning of it getting huge. Please no Stormwing. Please no Stormwing. Please no Stormwing. Please no Stormwing. They haven't slammed it yet, so maybe they just don't have it. Or they're thinking about continuing to go off or play it. Yeah. That is bad for me. Bottom, bottom at least. Not really what we're looking for at this stage. I, mean, I still think I have to Liliana here. Either way, it's going to answer something that's a problem. But we're going to get smacked for a lot. And they still have a lot of cards in their hand. So... If I attack, they could have mutagenic growth, but if they're using mutagenic growth defensively, I'm happy. I don't think they will. I think they'll just take a hit for three and then continue to just be ahead. So we're hoping that they don't have another threat like that. And the way to attack for a lot. Jeez. 
All right, well, this is not looking good. I need to find a way to spot kill this thing. That, that does it. Unfortunately, I cannot cast Kroxa and Bolt. I, I think I have to use the Bolt if it's between the two. All right, it just works. Let's play this so we can Blood Braid next turn. I, I could just not attack as a way to defend versus the Swift Spear. Do I just die if they find something like Lava Dart? We deal two to me, that puts me to seven, and I get hit for six down to one. Feels not great. I mean, I, I have to attack them or else they're just gonna attack me, so let's jam. We're, we're gonna hope that they find lands. That, that's the hope here. That's not a land. Jeez, we're just dead now, right? Yeah, we're just dead, right? Darts, uh, dart puts us down to negative one. Yeah, I mean, spell on the lava dart, that's what kills us. Brutal. If, if they hit a land there and we get to blood braid, I think we start playing ahead. What, what, would, what would we have hit? Liliana? Jeez. Yeah, I mean, if, if we get to live there, we might pull ahead, but not the case, unfortunately. Can't keep this. One more land and it's good. I, I could keep it off of the assumption that I probably draw a land. Is, is it crazy to want to keep this? It's like, what does it look like if I hit the land? I get to go Tarmogwife on two. Things I don't, I don't have any, any retroactive interaction. Like I don't have any removal spells, right? So like if they get on the board quickly, I, I kind of just die. There, there's a lot that could go wrong with this, and we've got one land, so let's ship it. This is better. Let's keep... And I guess bottom Coligon's command. I, I kind of just want to keep the curve. Missing a color, but we're all, we also don't have any cards of that color. Oh, is this Ponza? Oh, it scales. Interesting. I guess I wish I had kept Coligon's command. We mulligan to five, and we have Thoughtseize, though. They got Module, Ravager, Ballista. I think I'm just taking Module. That's the card I have the hardest time beating. Ballista is going to be really good versus Bob, though. Ballista comes in as a 2-2. Two -two. Also, Ballista can counter the Stomp if I, if I intend on targeting the Ballista. But this game is going to go long, and I don't think I can kill the... Mo I don't think I can easily handle the module. So let's just take that. I mean, I'm for sure taking Ballista before Arcbound. Yeah, Scales is, Scales is a pretty interesting deck, and they just didn't find the land, so that's good. So I think I'm going to play the Bob and hope that they 
miss again? Lilian is another awkward answer to Ballista, right? Because, like, this is going to come in with two counters, so it can kill the Bob, and if I Edict it, they can kill that too. And then I can't really stomp it, because then they just remove the counter and counter the stomp. So, uh... I think I'm just going to pass. And then, if they find the land and play whatever, I'll just stomp it. And then if, if they play the Ballista, I'll just concede the fact that I'm going to lose the Bone Crusher. So I hope they play the Ballista here, because I would love to get it out of the way. Okay. So I'll go to 16, probably. So their hand is Arcbound, Ravager, something. But I'm just going to Liliana Plus, I think. Start eating away at what little they have left. Um, I think I'm going to... I would have fetched Stomping Ground, but I think I'm just going to get Overgrown Tomb. I want more cards in the yard um, for Kroxa purposes. So I'll get Overgrown Tomb, play Liliana, and plus... I guess I could have just Swamped and discarded Stomping Ground now instead. But this, if it's going to happen by next turn, I'd rather just do it sooner rather than later. Because like, I'm going to do this anyway. So let's just do it now. Plus, ditch a stomping ground. Alright, go. Yeah, if you want to hit my Liliana for one, that feels good. Hey, what's up, boy? They're hurting me for one. That's aggressive. I want this Bob to be good, so I think I'm just going to ditch the Mire. Now that I've got the requisite cards for Kroxa anyway. Because I may want to keep this life for the Dark Confidant to be good. Another Ink Moth. <laughs> They're just going for the Infect kill, I guess. I mean... With another land, they're hitting me for two a turn. That's not nothing. It's a four turn clock. I mean, we're, we're also one off of ultimate, so maybe they have to start attacking the Liliana. We reveal Bone Crusher. Okay. Um, let's attack for two. And I, I kind of actually want to just play the Bone Crusher as a four three. And then just not use the Liliana. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think adding adding pressure here is is going to be good. And this not plusing means I'm not in ultimate range, but ultimate really isn't worth that much anyway. Yep. And because I have Liliana, I'm going to want my hand to be relatively empty. So, I mean, I did it not plus Liliana with the intention of not doing something. Oh, Snakeskin Veil. That's interesting. Also interesting, they didn't Pendlehaven first. While it was still small. Yeah, watch me lose to Infect. Wow. I mean, we're, we're still one turn away from ultimate, so I could always just make it a big infector versus everything. Revealed Goyf. I 
So, I mean, short of another copy of Snakeskin Veil, I think we're still fine. Yeah, we could be losing. I'm gonna pop this peatland to uh, see if we can just like still hit something. So if I find one man one mana removal, it's gonna be very good. I did not. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, nine infect. We've got six. 10, 12 power, they're just dead. Yeah. Okay. Scales. That was, that was scarier than I thought it would be. So it's for sure bringing in the push, for sure bringing in Plague Engineer, for sure bringing in Pillage. The Kalidus is interesting for stopping the modular, right? Because this, this would re replace, that, replace their stuff dying. Yeah, they did have Pendlehaven, so I think their mistake meant that they died, right? Because they, they could have Pendlehaven to their thing when it was still a 1-1 one, one and then killed us. Yeah, yeah, they, they definitely messed up that Pendlehaven play. They would have won. Um, I think I actually like the Cleansing Wildfires as well. Because, like, we could, we could stop them from uh, killing us with Infect. Um, they couldn't use Pendlehaven that turn. Oh no, the you're, you're talking about targeting the one one. Yeah, yeah, they could have targeted the one one. Did they have the mana to do it all? I guess they did. Yeah, so they just messed up. I mean, they also didn't use the Pendlehaven the previous turn when they should have. When they when they cast the uh, the the uh, the protection spell, they could we we were, we were we had no cards in hand. and We were tapped out. So like they could have given it plus one plus two and then put two counters on it. So they they messed it up twice. All right, let's take some off the top. I think Krox is probably fine here. On the draw, I think I'm cutting the Thought Seizes. Need two more cuts. I think Liliana also not looking great. It's it's real awkward versus things like Hanger Backwalker and Walking Ballista, but two is probably fine. I mean, if we can guarantee a fetch is on top, this hand's good. As crazy it may seem, I think I'm keeping this. Because, like, if we find any land off of the top, well, ideally a red one. If we find any land off the top, this is, like, kind of the nuts. So let's, let's, let's keep it. Look at the five again. Jeez, not their day. There's the scales. Get a black leaf clips, please. Not quite. So I'll push just about anything here. Please don't be hanger back. All right, well, I'll push that. I guess I'll go to 17. Any land, please. Well, we do something we could cast.
That's dangerous. So I, I still think I'm going to... Oh, they activated the wrong one. Uh, I'm going to push this. If they want to use the welding jar, that's fine. I've effectively killed the welding jar. Sure. Any land. Any land. Should have been more specific, but I mean, the land's a land. Yikes, there's the hanger back. So, I mean, I, I can bolt that, but they're going to make two 1-1s. One Yikes, Liliana is not good. I, I almost want to terminate this more than I want to bolt it. I think I will. There, there, there is some use, though, to saving this, because if they've got another welding jar... Terminate does say can't be regenerated, which isn't text that comes up very often. Whatever I'm doing, I need to do it now, though, because this hanger back is going to grow real quick. Yeah, I, I think I think I do need to uh, use the Terminate here, because if I find the land, I'm going to want to be able to run insects and have Lightning Bolt. Or even to just run out Glaive. I, I don't think I can do that. Because that basically means that I don't intend on killing Hanger back ever. Because remember, every time I let them untap with this, it's getting two counters bigger via the, the hardened scales. So like, if, if I go Goyf here, I'm pretty much conceding the fact that I'm never killing it. And I'm going to have to kill it at some point because it's just going to outsize the Goyf. Ooh, no, I don't want to click that. So this is this isn't this isn't a thopter, right? It's a blink moth. Can't buy a land back, but I can kill a a whatchamacallit. Maybe draw some damage over here and give me some time to find. If I think though the play here is either an six or Goyf. but I think my top end is so good that as long as I can survive up to that point, I'll win. And then this this lets me survive up to that point a little easier. So I, I like I like leaning towards run and six even though like the engineer could sweep these. But I mean I might also just use the engineer to name Blink Moth. All right, we found the land. Is it time to just name Blink Moth? I think it is. Blink Moth. Naming Blink Moth is also good in terms of our Liliana, right? Because they can't just like... They, they can't just a activate an Ink Moth in response to sacrifice that. They would just die immediately. Don't know what their hand could possibly be. They're like dismember or something yeah I guess dismember makes sense this is a 4-4 four four now I guess they didn't want to Push is a good one. So I can now deploy Goyf and hold up a push, or I could just hold up a bolt and a push, or I could just call on command. I think I want to hold up two removal spells because I can kill the Arcbound Worker and then I could kill what they're attempting to modular onto. 
And then on the following turn, maybe I can Colgon Skim in to stabilize. But adding Goyf here means that maybe I can actually start getting them on the back foot. The question just becomes, is, is a Goyf here going to be good enough to try to stabilize? Their, their last card could also just be another Dismember. I guess it's not Veil of Summer given how they've tapped. I mean, if it's not a land, it's got to be another Dismember. And Goyf is, Goyf is pretty weak versus the Dismember angle. I think I'm just going to hold up double removal and try to not die. Also, if they just like activate one of these lands, I might just Colgon's Command Shatter kill an artifact. Then I'll wait until they tap it. So the artifact that I want to kill, I think I'm killing these two. I don't want to trigger the modular now. So let's destroy an artifact and shock. Go down to four. I guess five, but it's gonna be four when I use this again. You have the Veil of Summer now? Oh, Veil. Yep. Go to two. That's not good. So I can kill this now, but they'll just activate this in response and put it on there. And then if I try to kill this, this kills me. So I have to pass. I mean, I still, I'm still just dead if they attack with all three. Oof, welding jar makes it even more impossible. All right, you got me. On the play, I think Thoughtseize gets better. Cause like you can take like the hardened skills and the like, but it, I still don't feel like it's it's good enough. Maybe it maybe it really is just better than something like Liliana. But on the play, even Liliana's get better. Yeah, I I just think this Liliana is not gonna be good, right? A lot of their creatures burst into smaller creatures, or their creature lands that kill the Liliana, or their walking ballista. Let's get some Thoughtseizes in there. Yeah, let's go first. With a keeper. Let's keep. And I think I might just ravine on one so that way I can stomp on turn one. Or sorry, turn two. If they don't play something that I want to push, I'm going to really wish that I had been able to get the ravine down. Oh, they skipped their first turn. That's not what they wanted to do. They just shame scooped. Well, that's unfortunate. I think that game was actually going to be pretty good. All right. Well, we finished the league at two and three. So we lost to Is It Prowess twice and Natch and uh, and Green Tron once. I think the Is It Prowess matchup is is probably fine, especially with all the removal spells that this list is playing. Um, obviously, seven one mana spells and Bone Crusher on top of Terminate and Golgon Skinny. That's a lot of ways to kill stuff, not even mentioning Liliana. So I think the matchup's probably just fine. I think we just got the, the worst half of it this particular league. The opponents had lots and lots of threats, but that's that's the strength of Blue-Red now with the uh, the Storm Entity and the, and the Sprite. So, I mean, the deck's very, very good, clearly. And uh, I think we've got real good game against it, but again, I think... I think we just drew less than average, and the opponent drew slightly above average. So I think I think that's why we lost those two games. Maybe I could have made other decisions a little bit better, but I'd have to go back and check. But I mean, overall, the list is, the list has still just felt very very solid. Um, that last match was 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 slated to be pretty interesting, but again, the opponent just kind of shame scooped, unfortunately. So I mean, it is what it is. But I mean, it, yeah, there's not really any any standout card. That or any and there's not a standout card really and there's also not really a card that 
is, is, is stand out in a bad way either. The list has just felt overall fine. Um, we saw the Bobs be very, very good this league. The Run and Sixes were good this league. The Bone Crushers were good this league. And, I mean, pretty much everything was good. I think I think the, the thing that we need to do moving forward is really just pick out what feels the best the most often, like threat-wise, clock-wise, and then pick the spells that support those. Because, I mean, we're not we're not building around Fatal Push or Lightning Bolt, right? Like, we're building around Ren and Six, we're building around Bone Crusher, we're building around Liliana or Blood Braid. So, like, we, we need to find the right mix of these and then figure out how to support it. So that's my take on that. And I think it is going to change um, a lot moving forward because Modern Horizons 2 is right around the corner. We've already seen lots of spoilers that uh, are going to definitely shake things up. Um, the, for example, that 5-mana dragon that costs cheaper based off of Colorless producing lands... That's going to definitely replace some of the sideboard slots. Um, the uh, the ignoble hierarch might make its way in um, with some modifications, and then there's also uh, what was the third thing that I had mentioned earlier? Don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, Jun Tyrarch. Jun Tyrarch is that's the ignoble hierarch, and I think it'll be cool. Uh, I'm not convinced it's what Jun wants because uh, I mean a, a, an accelerant is not really. Um, what we're like really yearning for, you know, like Birds of Paradise already exists. Birds of Paradise doesn't have Exalted, so I think that the real difference is Exalted, and whether or not that's going to be good enough to find its way in. And I think, I think just even having an Accelerant with Exalted might be good enough because versus those matchups where you need that little bit of extra velocity, that it it, it can be provided by the the uh, the hierarch, the uh, ignoble hierarchy. <laughs> So that's going to be it for this recording, um, and I'm going to end it there. So if you're watching the YouTube, uh, watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching up until this point, and I hope you have a good one, and until next time, done them out.